This episode of HCC 788 brought to you in part by Nonstop Pop. Nonstop Pop. Definitely an actual comic strip, and not just an extensive enterprise's front for a cartoonish supervillain's attempts to take over your world, fools! <laughs> Pardon us? Yes, definitely a comic. Everybody, Hood of Cobra Commander 788 here. It's time for another vintage G.I. Joe toy review, and it's time. We haven't done it for a while, but it is time to get back to the dreadnoughts, and we're gonna do it by looking at Road Pig. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really like this figure. I like this figure so much, I have his initials on the back of my jacket. See? Road Pig! Road Pig gets his name from the term Road Hog, which is what we call a driver who takes up more than his fair share of the roadway. But he's not called Road Hog, he's called Road Pig, because pigs are funnier. So let's get our motors running and head out on the highway and take a look at the 1988 dreadnought Road Pig! This is Road Pig, the Dreadnought from 1988. He was first available in 1988 and was also available in 1989. He was discontinued for the year 1990. There was no new Dreadnought introduced that year, but in 1989 we did get Naugahyde. Road Pig is a very interesting character, particularly in how he is portrayed in the G.I. Joe comic book. Uh, he is shown as having multiple personalities, and we will talk more about that later. Road Pig was a Dreadnought, and the Dreadnoughts were a motorcycle gang that originally were predominantly Australian and were probably inspired by post-apocalyptic movies like Mad Max. The Dreadnoughts were led by Zartan, who was introduced in 1984 as the Master of Disguise. Uh, he was an assassin who also operated in the swamps. After the introduction of Zartan, in 1985 we got the original lineup of Dreadnoughts, Buzzer, Ripper, and Torch, and uh, they each had their own special weapon and personality, and they're all just wonderfully anarchic. Zartan's brother Xandar and his sister Zarana joined in 1986. Also in 1986 we got Monkey Wrench and Thrasher, the driver of the Thunder Machine. 1986 was a big year for Dreadnoughts. In 1987 we got a new Dreadnought called Zanzibar, the Dreadnought Pirate, and he came with a vehicle called the Air Skiff. Then of course Road Pig was introduced in 1988, and we got Naugahyde in 1989, so Road Road Pig was one of the later Dreadnoughts. By the time he joined, there was already a very large gang. There were fewer Dreadnoughts in the later years. In fact, after Naugahyde, there weren't any new characters introduced. Uh, there was another version of Road Pig in 1991 as a supersonic fighter. And in 1993, we got another version of Zartan in Ninja Force. Let's look at Road Pig's accessories, starting with this one, just to get it out of the way. Uh, his spiked battle shield. The battle shield has minimal detail, and and it clips onto his wrist. There's the clip there. And uh, this is probably my least favorite of his accessories, but it's not terrible. At least when it clips onto his wrist, it doesn't obstruct anything else. Uh, but there just really isn't much to it. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at what many people probably consider to be his best accessory, his cinder block hammer. This is his signature weapon. It is unique, it is strange, and it is perfect for Road Pig. It fits fits the character, much in the way the original Dreadnoughts weapons uh, fit those characters. It is absurd, it's over the top, uh, but is, so is Road Pig. Now let's look at his projectile weapon, his high-powered crossbow, which also clips on to the wrist. There's the clip there, similar to the battle shield. Uh, and uh, you can see that it has a bolt, and the bolt has a bulb at the end. And so maybe this is an explosive bolt, we don't know. Uh, but this is not a bad weapon. Um, it's 
it's okay. I still think the cinder block hammer is the best, but I can accept this. Another th nice thing is that since it does clip on the wrist, uh, you can put the cinder block hammer in either hand and he can still carry his other weapons. His final accessory is the high density impact pads and these look like modified American football shoulder pads, uh, but they are heavily modified and they just look great. Some great detail on these. The right shoulder has these layered armor plates and the left shoulder is spiked um, and it has some very nicely detailed buckles here. This kind of implies that the straps are supposed to go under Road Pig's arms, uh, but we don't have the straps there, we just have the buckles. Still very nicely sculpted, uh, wonderful stitching detail on the front and back. Now that we have his accessories removed, we can look at the articulation on Road Pig. He had the standard articulation for G.I. Joe figures of 1988, meaning he could turn his head from left to right and look up and down. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder and swivel at the shoulder all the way around. Uh, he had a hinge at the elbow and could move at the elbow about 90 degrees. He had a swivel at the bicep and so he could swivel his arm all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber O-ring that allowed him to move at the torso a bit. He could move his legs apart about so far. He could bend his leg at the hip about 90 degrees and bend at the knee about 90 degrees. Let's look at the sculpt to design and color of Road Pig and the first thing I'd like you to notice is that he is an exceptionally tall figure. Uh, comparing him to an average high G.I. Joe action figure, uh, he is a bit taller. Uh, not a great deal, but enough to be noticeable. Road Pig is also a very wide G.I. Joe action figure. He is exceptionally bulky. His chest and arms are huge, much larger than the average G.I. Joe action figure. He is more along the lines of a Sergeant Slaughter. Now, Sergeant Slaughter had very large arms and a very large sculpted chest, whereas Road Pig's entire midsection is just massive. Looking at Road Pig's head, he has a flat top with white hair and a red stripe that goes all the way around. That's very striking. Uh, he has an earring in his left ear. Road Pig has a reputation for being ugly. In fact, that's the main focus of his file card, but I don't think this face looks ugly. Uh, I think it looks more cherubic, but he does look odd enough to be a dreadnought. His chest is totally bare with just some sculpted muscle detail. Same on the back. No other detail at all. His arms are very unique. Uh, on his right arm, he has a couple random black straps. Uh, and on his left arm, uh, on his hand, he has a black glove. Uh, just one single glove. Uh, he may have been trying to look like Michael Jackson. It was the 80s after all. More importantly, on his left arm, he has a tattoo. And this tattoo design is usually associated with anarchy. Uh, the circle A has been an anarcho-punk symbol since the late 70s. And I think that fits. Uh, the Dreadnoughts kind of have an anarchic edge to them. On his waist, he has a very plain black belt. And in front, he has this, uh, what looks like a leather-studded crotch protector, I guess. His legs are also really interesting. He has black trousers, plain on the left leg. And on his right leg, he has a brown strap. And he has three silver bolts for his uh, powered crossbow. And they are about the same size. Not exact, but pretty close. And I really do like this when they coordinate the sculpting on the figure with the accessories. A really bonus points for that. Then finally, he has brown boots with silver armor plate on them. Uh, and we have some sculpted on screws on the side. And I just really like these. They're so unique and so well done. This totally bare chest is kind of difficult to grade because you could look at it in two ways. Um, you could look at it as just a lack of detail. They skimped on the detail in the chest and just didn't make a lot of effort for that. Um, or you could look at it as instead of detail on the chest, they took what would otherwise have been a sculpted on detail on the chest and made it into an accessory, the shoulder pads. Uh, so uh, I kind of tend to look at it as the latter. I think that the uh, totally bare chest without detail is excusable because I really like the shoulder pads and I like the way Road Pig looks with them on. Let's take a look at Road Pig's file card. Uh, it has his faction as the enemy. It doesn't say Cobra. He is a dreadnought. It has the portrait of Road Pig here and this portrait looks a lot uglier than the action figure does. It has his code name as Road Pig and he is a dreadnought. His file name is Donald DeLuca and that is the name of a real person. He is named after a Hasbro design director with that name, Don DeLuca. His birthplace is Go Blue, Michigan and instead of listing specialties it lists his arrest record and this is kind of amusing. His arrest 
past record includes speeding, reckless endangerment, littering, assault, grand theft auto, usury, uh, felony spitting, uh, petty bribery, passing stop school buses at high speeds. Hey, why does he have a serial number? He is not U.S. military personnel and never has been as far as we know. This middle paragraph says, when Road Pig was born, the doctor held him up and said, this is the ugliest baby I've ever seen. He was expelled from kindergarten for milk money extortion and dishonorably discharged from the Cub Scouts after being kicked out of a low-life outlaw gang for smelling worse than was acceptable by even their standards, he joined the Dreadnoughts as a probationary member. They're having a hard time making up their minds about this one. So he's such an unpleasant individual that even the Dreadnoughts were not sure they wanted to take him. They banned him from football games because he stopped the clock. His mother had to tie a pork chop around his neck so the dog would play with him. Uh, he went to visit the Empire State Building and he got strafed. I tell you, beauty may be skin deep, but ugly goes clean to the bone. This whole file card riffs on his ugliness and crassness. It reads like a list of you're so ugly jokes. Ooh, that's right. My mother had to hang a pork chop around my neck so the dog would play with me. Ooh, oh, that's not all. I'm so ugly I have to sneak up on my mirror. Ooh, I get no respect. No respect at all. Road Pig did have some G.I. Joe media appearances, but they were somewhat limited. He did not appear in the Sunbow animated series, but he did appear in the later Deke animated series. Although in that series, at least every reference that I've been able to find, uh, he appeared in his version 2 colors. Road Pig did have a fair number of appearances in the G.I. Joe comic book. That's where the character was mostly developed. Uh, he first appeared in issue number 83, and that issue was titled Road Pig. There were two important character traits that Road Pig had in the comic book. Uh, one, he was in fact infatuated with Zarana, Zartan's sister. Though Zarana never returned his affection, she would sometimes use his feelings for her to manipulate him. His other character trait was his split personality. He had the Donald personality, which was smart and articulate. His road pig personality was brutish and violent, similar to Bruce Banner and the Hulk. Multiple personality disorder, now known as dissociative identity disorder, is a controversial diagnosis. Uh, there is disagreement over over how to define and diagnose the symptoms. It's also diagnosed in women far more than in men. Whether or not there is a clearly defined mental illness that causes multiple personalities, it is a popular literary device. Uh, we seem to be fascinated by the idea of multiple people inhabiting the same body. We see it in uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, in The Incredible Hulk, in The Lord of the Rings, Smeagol and Gollum. It's a variation on the idea of one person occupying two bodies, as we see with Tomax and Zamot. Multiple personality disorder entered pop psychology with the 1973 book Sybil by Flora Retta Schreiber, which was turned into the 1976 film starring Sally Field. Looking at this figure overall, I'm going to call this a top tier figure. I'm partial to the Dreadnoughts anyway, and Road Pig is a worthy addition to the game. Some problems with the figure, I think maybe some of the accessories were not entirely necessary, but I really like the cinder block hammer, uh, and I guess I could criticize the plain chest with no detailing at all. But I really like it with the shoulder pads on. I think it looks great. So I think that more than makes up for it. The character is entertaining and well written. Larry Hama clearly enjoyed writing the Dreadnoughts and he put a lot of flair into Road Pig. It's really too bad that later in the G.I. Joe toy line they didn't focus more on the Dreadnoughts. They had all these other sub factions but they seem to have forgotten about one of G.I. Joe's first sub factions. But in 1988, the Dreadnoughts were still going strong, and Road Pig was a great example. That was my review of Road Pig. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do a few things for me. First, like this video on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, support me on Patreon, and share this video. That's what keeps this channel growing. And don't forget, we have a group project we're working on right now. See my previous video and send me your grunts. Grunt gets no respect at all, but we're going to try to get him some respect. Oh, since she has to be in every video, here she is. These pretzels are making me thirsty. You've already done that one. Sergeant Slaughter, I love you! Thanks for watching. Check back next week and remember only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe. Throat pig! <laughs>